Alright guys, we're back for another mathematics video. This time we are going to talk about decimals. What are decimals? Well, decimals are things that, numbers that um, are after the whole number. So let's say one, what's half, and then you have two, and then you have three, and then you have four. But let's say I have one and a half pizzas. Okay, I only have one, here's a two, but then let's say I have one and a half here then how do i do that right so how do we do that if you think about how the 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 whole number system works is you have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten right um you count it until nine and then you goes back you go back to zero and then you the next digit you start again from one so you have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then you, you bump that to 2, and then you have 30, and so on. For decimals, it's similar. So instead, so let's go from 0 to 1. So you have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, which I don't have space, so I'm going to put it here, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and then you have 1. Now, you could, we could have 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, and, then this, and so on and so forth, and then we get to 0 0.98, 0 0.99, and then we get 1.00. Here, um, we're going by hundredths, so if you look at this right here, 1,234.567, okay, here we have the thousandths, uh, thousands place, we have the hundredths place, we have the tens place, and with the ones place, okay. Now, the ones place is this basically the it's like the the mirror. It's a center line. Everything else is like a mirror. So five would be some the tenths place. Six would be the hundredths place, and seven would be the thousandths. Place. So we are mainly interested in the first three decimal points most of the time. Um, your calculator will show you nine or even twelve, depending, or even more decimal places. Um, so essentially, we could have as many decimal points as we want, but like these are not as significant. Um, it's just too small to have any value. So how do we actually? Um, find decimals or how to use them uh, before we understand that we have to understand that there are two types of um, decimal numbers one is called a rational number and it's called a irrational number what are those differences this let us discuss rational numbers are the numbers where you could um, convert like express that number as a fraction so like 3 over 4, 0 0.5, 3, 17, 5%. Um, These are all numbers that you can express as a, as a fraction. So how, how do you express as a fraction? 1 half, 3 over 1, 17 over 1. That will be uh, 5 over 100, or you could say 1 over 20. So these you can all express in, in fractions. Now, irrash, irrational numbers are like pi, square root of 2, square root of 3, the number e. Uh, the, so these numbers you cannot, let's say, let's say you have the, uh, you have pi, right? So pi is 3.141529. Um, if, if my memory serves me right, um, let's just check real quickly. Um, but it technically should go on forever if uh, 
if you have never actually seen this number before, you can you can you can Google and you can find out how long it goes. It goes on forever. Um, so pi, I was wrong. <laughs> um, you're not supposed to memorize this, so I had the seven uh, that I shouldn't have. So it was five, two, nine, uh, then six, five, something. So might have been rounded. So it goes on forever. You can never change it as a fraction. You have um, 22 over 7 is like a close estimate. Um, but even then, it's not an exact. So people use 20, 22 over 7 to do certain questions. Uh, and it's, it's just an estimate. So that's, the answer will be this. And then you see it repeats every six decimal places. And, um, you know, it's we're only accurate to the uh, to the hundredth place. Now, we're only interested in the rational numbers um, because when, whenever we're dealing with irrational numbers, it's the numbers you have to use a calculator to have any value or you'll be just expressing in those symbols and you won't you won't be able to um, do math the same way as you do with rational numbers like let's say you want to add you cannot simply just do root 2 plus 1 and come up with a, a decimal number you could but it's not necessary so things like that now let's think about how we um, express de uh, fractions as decimals best way to start is using tenths, hundredths, and a thousandths of a, you know, of a, of a fraction. Now, that would be 0 0.1, that would be 0 0.01, and that would be 0 0.001. Notice that I have three decimal places for the number of zeros I have. I have two decimal, uh, two decimal places for the number of zeros for the hundredth and one decimal place for the number of zeros here. So if the number of the top changes, so will these. So let's say an arbitrary one, five over 10 will be 0 0.5, 729 over 1000 will be 0 0.729. And, uh, oh, oh yeah, that should be this one. So 150 over 1000 would be, oh no, sorry. Um, let's scratch that. So um, 15 over 100 will be 0 0.15. Um, so the, that's how you go between decimal points, I mean uh, fractions to decimals, but if you want to, if it's a fraction where it's not so obvious, let's say three over four, um, you can change it into one over, over 10 or over 100. So if it's over 10, uh, since it doesn't actually multiply, um, because it's going to be um, a uh, decimal, you should do 100, so it will be 25 instead, so that will be 75, and then that is 70, 0 0.75. Um, some you can't really change, because 7 does not go into a 10, 100, or 1,000, or for that matter, any, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't go in. Uh, any multiple of 10. So what you're going to do is you have to do what it says, right? So 5 over 7 is 5 divided by 7 because remember this divide symbol? So you have to go 5 divided by 7 and you have to do a long division. So 49 minus that. So you will see this is a repeating decimal just like um, the uh, 22, just like the pi estimate of 22 over 7, but this would be simpler. So, that'll be 3, 30 will be 4, 28, 20 will be 2, 14, so 60, 60 would be 8, and it should be one more. Um, 40 would be 5 and then 30, 35. Yep, they were back to 5. So this would repeat. 
So, I mean, in this case, you could you could express the answer as um, zero point seven one four two eight five, and then draw a line so that they you know they repeat. Um, other other um, repeating decimals like um, one over three. This goes like this. You could do something like 0 0.3 with a dot or a line, doesn't matter. Um, now, comparing decimals is very um, intuitive because if you, like, like I was saying, if you're looking at, let's say, the decimal places, right? The further to the, to the decimal place is the bigger one. So like I have a tenth here, and I have no tenths here. I only have a eighteen hundredths or eighteen thousandths. Um, but then here, I have fourteen tenths. So or fourteen hundredths. So th clearly, this one is bigger. But if we have something like trick, a little tricky, then it looks like well, you have to compare the tenths place. And then see which one is bigger. So this one is bigger. But what happens if we have, we could have um, a long um, decimal place, but then like they, a lot of them are similar. Then the best way to to compare these is to write them out like like so. And then you compare which one was bigger by comparing the tenths, the hundredths, and then if they're the same, then you move on to the next one. So two, they were the same, five, they were the same. So now you look at which one is bigger. So this one was bigger. So that is about comparing fractions. Now what about adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing? Well, they're actually the same thing as what you would do for whole numbers. So let's say I have 7 or 0 0.7 plus 1.2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a long uh, uh, vertical um, addition here and I just have to align the decimal place and just add. So 7 plus 2 is 9, place the decimal down and then 0 plus 1 is 1 and the answer will be 1 point nine. What if I have something like zero point zero five plus one point two zero nine? So then I do the same thing. One point zero two zero nine. The order does not matter. Zero point zero five. Now if I have to align the decimal place. Okay, nine plus oops, okay, here's the problem. There is no number. Technically, it's still zero because you have nothing behind it, right? So it'll be nine plus zero is nine. Zero plus five is five. Two plus zero is two. One plus zero is one. So one point two five nine will be the answer. Now subtraction is the same thing as normal subtraction. So let's take the same. Um, let's say I do this. Then I align them, and then I subtract. And if you have something like 1.7 minus 0 0.105, something like this, I still align them, and then you have nothing here, right? So most most of the most of the students will just go like, okay, five zero. 6, 1, okay. But that is actually not the case because if you add them back, you will not get 1.7. So you, the uh, rule of thumb is just always fill the zeros in and then subtract it as if the decimal place was not there. So you can cover it up. Do the subtraction. So 10 minus 5 is 5. That would be a 9 because I have to borrow from the 7 so now this will be a, a 9 that will be a 6 so that will be a 9 6 minus 1 will be 5 so 
1.595 would be would be your answer. Okay. For sub for multiplication times let's say let's just do a simple one times two. One you write them down like this. Multiply by two and you ignore the decimal place, do it as if you're doing 15 times 2, so 5 times 2 is 10, 1 times 2 plus 1 is 3, and then you look at how many decimal places, I have 1 here, none here, so I just have to go from here, the back, one, one place to the left, so the answer is 3, or 3.0, um, doesn't matter how many decimal places, you could do 6.75, times 2.52 okay so something like this it will be long and tedious because it's like multiplying a three digit number by a three digit number so I'm going to do that so that's 10 14 plus 1 13 here and then 25 plus 2 35 plus 2, 7, um, and then 30 plus 3, 33, then you have 10 plus 1, 14 plus 1 would be 5, 6 times 2 is 12 plus 3, uh, plus 1 is 13, that would be 0, 10, so that would be 11, carry 1, that's four and five, one more is zero. Carry one, that's seven, one. So, and then you have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So the answer is one, oh, 17.01. So that's how you multiply and dividing. It's a little bit more complicated. So let's say I have three divided by two that's not exactly a decimal but if you if you look at it three divided by two let's just do it for now I would, so two times one is two minus uh, three is one or three minus two is one then now you have a remainder normally you just put one or one but we can actually solve this so we have to add a decimal so Add a decimal here and on top, then bring the zero down. You have 10 divided by 2 is 5, 2 times 5 is 10. The answer is so the answer is 1.5. Now, what happens if there are decimal places here? If we were to do 0 0.3 divided by 2, where the the dividend has a decimal with it and the divisor does not so in that case we will write as usual write it in here and you just do it as as if you were dividing with the uh, decimal place on top then you start from the very left hand side 0 divided by 2 0 then 3 divided by 2 is 1 and then you do 2 times 1 is 2, then you subtract 3 minus 2 is 1, add a 0, bring it down, just got a 0 here, 10 divided by 2 is 5, so the answer is 0 0.15. So for the next example, we're going to have 3 divided by 0 0.2, where the decimal is in the divisor. So again, we will write the dividend inside and the divisor outside. Now what you're going to do is you have to remove, so this, the divisor always has to be a, a whole number. So it has to, you, you sh when you move the decimal place, you're essentially moving the decimal place from the div dividend. And note that the decimal place wasn't there before, but technically it's after the number. So we move it one, and then we add zero. So we 
technically we're doing 30 divided by 2. So it's just 15. Or if you really want it, we could do 3 divided by 2 is 1. So remainder 1, drop to 0. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. So that is equal to 15. Now the next example, we will be having both dividends and the divisor as a decimal. So we have 0 0.3 divided by 0, 0 0.02. Now we have 0 0.3 inside, 0 0.02 outside, and again, you have to move two decimal places. So we have to move the inside two decimal places and a decimal place here. And when you do that, you do that on the top. So what you're doing now is we have 30 divided by 2. So again, it is 15. All right, what if what if we have 0 0.03 divided by 0 0.02? Well, the situation is very similar. Right, we have one decimal place in the divisor, so we're going to move it to the right by 1. We're going to move it to the right by 1, fill it fill the decimal on top. Then we have 0 0.3 divided by 2. So that's gone. So we have so now we ask ourselves 0 divided by 2 you can't so now you go to the next one so 3 divided by 2 you can go one time so then you multiply you get 2 and subtract you get 1 then you have to add a 0 right remember and you have 10 divided by 2 answer is 5 so the answer would be 0 0.15 so this covers all basically all the, the scenarios of dividing decimals um, compared to multiplying decimals the dividing is a lot more complicated because you have m many more situations um, the next topic we will talk about which is going to be in another video is basically how do you go from a fraction into a decimal and then into something called a percent or percentage. Um, it's something that we will, percentages are basically something we will be using a lot more in real life. Um, they are the same representation. They are also all talking about um, numbers that are between whole numbers. Um, and so we'll find out the relationship between fractions, decimals, and percentages. So that's it for today's video. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you've learned something. And uh, so I uh, hope to see you soon. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give it a thumbs up. And we'll see you very soon.